He's up against unbeaten Colombian Brian Bahara. So commentary from Tim and Carl after Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with eight rounds scheduled. And it'll be for the vacant WBO Youth Super Featherweight Championship. Brought to you by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensberry Promotions, along with their great sponsors, 32 Red and Unibet. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, Steward in Charge, Ben Harmsworth, along with the World Boxing Organization. President Francisco Paco Vodacarcel. Supervisor tonight, John Handelar. Timekeeper, Brett Bowles. Our three judges assigned will be Nerman Adrovich of Luxembourg, Michael Alexander of England, and Amar Sokrawi of France. Our referee in charge will be John Latham of England. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the red corner, he comes to the ring wearing black with red, yellow, and blue, and weighed in officially at nine stone, two pounds. Coming to us from Bogota, Colombia, he brings an undefeated record with seven wins, one draw, three of his seven wins, coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brian El Flo Barajas. And his opponent across the ring in his championship contest, fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He comes to the ring wearing black with silver and weighed in officially at nine stone, three pounds. Hailing from Southampton, Hampshire, England. He had a stellar amateur career, and now as a professional, is undefeated with 10 wins. Five of his 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Sugar Boy Roy, Royston Barney Smith. But he may only be 20 years of old, 20 years of age rather, but uh, Sugar Boy Roy looks to have the makings, doesn't he, of the complete package that you need to succeed in and out the ring to go with the talent. He's got the, the looks, the personality, the Super. presence, and there's no shortage of boisterous claims as to what path he's on. I'll be world champion before I'm 22. That is what he said coming into this. Wants to be the youngest post-war British fighter to have held a world title. And of course, he can have a word with the man who holds that record at the moment because Prince Nassim is in the building. But this is something of a, an unknown quantity, isn't it? You're taking oh. on a South American and there's no such thing as a weak South American, really, you know, is there? Especially the Colombians. Typically, they're, they're hard punchers. Does anyone remember British press card? coming over and, <laughs> and cleaning out Amir Khan when he wasn't meant to, but there's a lot to like about Barney Smith. Big statement and wanting to be a world champion before he's 22, I think. I still think there's a lot to do, but this is the first time he's fought an opponent with a winning record, and I think this is when we're going to start to see the best of, of Royston Barney Smith. Yeah, Barajas. Again, is he too is only 23 years of age, so still a, a fledgling career of his own. First fight of uh, 2024, first time he's been out of uh, South America as well in the opposition. As you would expect that this early on in his career is uh, nothing significant. And so it's a learning process for him and indeed us as to how good he is. Again, it's another fight, just credit to the card and the promoter for putting it on, but it's another fight where it's probably the toughest fight for both guys. But Barney Smith, there's a lot of people say a lot of good things about him. I think he's got a great team and, and Ben Davison, Barney Smith and Lee Wiley. They really study their opponents well. And this kid, I think he, he 
we'll see it in the future, but I, I do think there's a little bit of stardust with him. Yeah, his uh, coach, he said, yeah, he's a look quick KOs, good for building records, good. Good solid shot that was by uh, Sugar Boy. But he said, in terms of his development, oh. he can't be getting rounds in, but... That was a beautiful shot to the body there, Tim, and, and I think that Barakas definitely felt a lovely... He felt that as well. Yeah. Well, that might force a little bit of a rethink from the Colombian. He's taken some very, very good shots in this uh, opening round here. He's got the reach advantage as uh, Smith. Yeah, you can even t you can even tell that when you're looking at a prank, yeah. his arms look extremely short. I had a bit of an issue an issue with that myself, and it's it's important to get the feet right to get you in the range. Good opening round then for Sugar Boy. Expect it, like, yeah? Trying to over, step back. Good round from Royston Barney Smith. Have a look at some of the uh, key moments. The first punches. That was a great yeah, hook body to the body. Shot. Great shot. And it was just about timing. Six down. He threw Three, it as, as Barakas was punching, and they're the ones that normally hurt. But he's been talking about the the environment that he's he's in. We mentioned Ben Davis and his his coach, but he said. Yeah, the progress is due to the environment, the habits that he observes from a distance from all those around him. Again, that straight left hand again, primed, driven through that defence of Barajas, falling a bit short that time. Yeah, he's looking for that shot now, Barney Smith. Barney Smith, he controls the distance really well. It's something I've liked about him throughout his whole career. He, he's never too far out of range, or he's never too close. Really, really good distance control. Yeah, boxing is very much part of his DNA from the time he was growing up, and he said he used to love sitting there watching the likes of uh, Morales and Marco Antonio Barrera loved Sugar Ray Leonard, all the old fights, so he's learned off some of the real legends of the ring. That was what stirred the interest. His dad, of course, used to box as well. You mentioned Eric Morales. There's a bit oh. of a look of Eric Morales about there Barney is, Smith, isn't, isn't there? Yeah. But if he achieves half of what oh, Morales yeah, does... Yeah, if he does that, then he'll be a special boy. But here in the big arena, under the lights, in front of the TV cameras, it's a good opening two rounds so far. And it's the, it's the Colombian Barajas who's been forced to have a little bit of a rethink. He doesn't want to stay too close in range. Yeah, Barakas is having a go. He, he, you know, he's, he, he's being brave, but it's it's just difficult when you're fighting someone like Barney Smith. The distance control's good, the shot selection's good, the range is good. It's always going to be a hard night work. Well, in another time, in another place, we could have been seeing Barney Smith in the Olympic Games. He was going to be part of the uh, Olympic team till, of course, COVID hit, and then he turned pro. But it's a comfortable and measured display again here. It's a mature display, yeah, isn't I think it? He just, he, I think he, he took a, a headbutt to the chin. Oh, he's, a, he's cut under his eye. Well, it's a good job that is under the eye, not I think over that the top might of be it. two cuts, actually, Tim. Yeah. I think there's a, a cut above it as well. Or is it just... In control. Welcome back. The corner 
was a little late in getting in there to deal with this. Now here, some of the action from the previous round, but we don't see the clash of heads. There it is. Yeah, and he's got two cuts, Barney Smith. He's one above his eye and one under his eye. Now, it happened at the end of the round, so I think you have to give a, a little bit of a, a, a buy ball to, to the cup man and how slow he was getting in, but yeah, you should be ready at all times. That was that was way too long for me. Oh, lovely shot. Well, that is a way to come back, and now maybe he's got this the feeling here that he doesn't want any disasters. The blood, as we said, was pouring from that cut in a very, very difficult position right above the above the island. So he wants to get this job done and done quick. Fiends are good as well from Barney Smith. Just trying to tease Baracus into throwing something. But I think that that cut, it's, it's not too dangerous, it's not too bad, it's, it's, it's above the eye, which is a little bit of a concern, but I think he'll be okay. But he'll want to, he'll not want this to go the distance now and allow that cut to worsen. He's a young kid, he wants to be fighting as regularly as possible. He does not want to have issues with that going forward in the future as well. So I think he'll be, he'll, he'll be looking to put the foot on the gas here now and, and possibly get rid. Yeah, the the strength and the and the growth coming from the the continuous pressure and it, effort that he's going to have to put in here. And only three rounds into the fight here now, but what what a leg from Bracca says he's not. I mean, you could easily be frustrated by someone like Barney Smith, but Baracus hasn't allowed himself to do that. He's still trying to box the orders. And he's just not having too much success here. Yeah, because I've got to say, what you, you thought you might see when they came back out for the start of this third round is Baracus looking to try and swarm all over With him and cut, try and yeah. worsen that cut. But it's over his eye, but he's, he's not done that. It's a, a conservative approach. That's a lovely shot, and just right into the solar plexus there from, from Barney Smith. There's been a few of them landed pl pretty clean, so Baracus is, is clearly a tough guy. And again, Smith with the with the speed, the accuracy to go with it. There's not a lot that he's throwing that isn't landing. Oh, and it's a nice shot as well. And just you see, it, it's moving the feet back as he does it. As the feet stops, he plants a shot, and it's a good shot. Dang good round for Smith. Uh, we'll have a look at that clash of heads again. Here it is. It may be the first time as well that Barney Smith had a deal with a cut in his career, which we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about him and just how he deals with it. He stays calm and relaxed. Yeah, well. Doesn't yeah. rush things after the cut. Remains composed. And even the moment that he went back in to, to take his seat in the corner after that cut came, his body language did not show somebody that was getting stressed at what had just happened. He was just deep breathing, remaining calm and in control. And he's kept, as you said, to the orders here. But the if you're the harder the conflict, as he, as he finds out throughout his career, the more glorious the triumph and well, he's got a live opponent here tonight he's taking he's not taking any chances and as we said he's not taken on too many punches and Barakas has been surprisingly quite reticent at times yeah he's just switched here to uh southpaw momentarily Barakas but if you're looking at the battle of the feet here southpaw against orthodox Barakas is actually doing quite well and keeping his left foot outside Barney Smith's lead foot but Barney, I think, is is comfortable and allowing him to do that. He's controlling the distance and he's trying to land that backhand just as Baracus comes in.
And again, we get to the midway point in the round, and the more it goes on, the more confident you feel that Smith will feel that he's again able to take pretty much everything that's coming from Barakas. Barakas having a go there. A little bit of success in this round so far. That was better, trying to work the hook to the body there, Barakas, which was a, a bit of a switch. And what he's doing as well, Barakas, just as, as Barney Smith kind of goes back towards the ropes, he's in the orthodox stance, and as he punches, he comes forward, not square, but into the southpaw stance, and it just gets him a little bit closer. Good shot from Barakas, nice counter right hand. It's a good uh, round so far from Barakas, yeah. He is just beginning to come out of his shell a little bit more. Uh, maybe for the first time a little bit of a fatigue beginning to show. I think Barakas knows that as well, yeah. that's why he's putting the pressure on. Ooh, Ooh, he shot. took a brutal shot and he came back, landed a good right hand to the side of the head, but he took some good shots in that round and that was definitely Barakas round. Yeah, good round for Barakas. I think I, I, I think that Barney Smith maybe just had a round off. He was controlling things pretty easily from a distance. Uh, I'm hoping he just had a round off and he improves more the next round, but that was a that was a good round from Barakas and I think I think he'll be looking more the same in the next round. Let's, it'll be interesting to see how he starts. I imagine he's going to start on the front foot. It's important for Barney Smith to be able to have that. Well, five. Coming into round five, and a few deep breaths there. Barakas overall so far in the previous four has landed only 19 shots to 63 for Barney Smith. But this maybe isn't where Smith wants to be because if he Barakas, you feel, really does want to scrap. Getting him on the ropes is the best place he yeah. feels he's going to get his success. Yeah, that, and that is where he's going to get most of his success when, when Barney Smith is, is, is staying on the ropes. But he looks to be quite comfortable on the ropes. But, um, you know, it's advisable against someone like Barakas just to move your feet. Don't stay there for too long and claim the centre of the ring again. Well, the laces are being done up. And that certainly didn't favour Barakas because he was on the front foot at that moment when he was called to a halt. Yeah, I think we need to see more of this here from Barney Smith. Just punch him from distance. Not allowing Barakas to get too close. His one-two right down the pipe is, a, is it's a lovely combination. And it lands quite often. The feints have been good as well, but when he allows Barakas to get close, that's when he has a bit of success. But that's nice from Barney Smith. It is it's good, clean work from Barney Smith. It is right back to what he was doing for the opening round and a half, two rounds before he had that, that, that head clash. And you could see that Previous round, Barakas coming out of the shell a little bit. There's a little bit of blood beginning to appear on his face now. And he's actually quite comfortable. He is quite comfortable, Barney Smith, when he when his back's to the ropes. But again, it's probably the only time that Barakas can get any success. So. I don't really see too much of a point of being there. If you can control this fight from the centre of the ring, which Barney Smith can certainly do, I think then that's the way to do it. And it looks like Barakas as well has taken a little bit of a, a breather as Smith goes to the body, then tries to whip that hook 
underneath Baraka's defence as he gets in to a more closer quarter. Did well to elude those. Yeah, I think, I think one of them body shots may have just hurt Baracus, you know. He's looking for it again, Barney Smith. Yeah, there he is. He sends the Great combination work. Certainly more artistry and in finesse about the work of Smith. What you got to do now, though, if you're Barney Smith and you have heard him with a body shot, is you got to disguise the shots. Brackus knows it's coming. He'd be looking to defend it. It's important to disguise that shot and just land it as sweet as you can. Better round that from Barney Smith. Coming up later on, we have uh, Dennis McCann against Janet Beluta. Uh, the rematch from that epic fight at the York Hall from a year ago. Over here, there is, uh, there's still a lot of work in this fight. Yeah, it was a much better round from Barney Smith. Braggas had a good, good previous round. It was important that, that Barney Smith just didn't let Braggas get any more momentum and, and, and just shut that down. And he did that. And I think he hurt Braggas with one or two body shots as well. Corners, ten seconds. Well, he's known pretty much nothing but success in his uh, career since uh, since a 12-year-old when he first won his uh, national title and the golds and the euros and the 37 fights fighting for England, which he won 36. Everything has gone pretty much according to, to plan. Uh, the professional ranks will throw up a few curveballs. And having to deal with that cut early on, and there you can see a quick shot to the body. It was a little bit low, and uh, Barajas has been warned. Here we go. Barry Smith, a little bit of stick about how long it took him to get into the ring when the cut happened, but yeah, yeah. he's done a great job on it so far. It, it, it almost looks like he doesn't have a cut anymore. Varies the shots really well, Barney Smith. The, the, the shot selection is fantastic. Oh, oh lovely uppercut. Beautifully delivered. Calibrated to perfection. Delivered with authority. Landed with some real hurt. For the confidence that may have slightly just ebbed away from him in that round after the oh, beautiful after start. the cut when Barakas came back it's right back now and Barakas again is the one who is having to basically readjust what he's doing here because he's had little success for the uh, last round and a half Look, to, to be able to take a round off like Barney Smith did a couple of rounds ago Bar the, the round that Barakas won yes it shows a, lot, a great deal of maturity to, to just kind of just get back to your boxing, have a round off, have a bit of a breather, don't get nailed too much, possibly lose a round, but he's won every, everything else since. So as he went in for that shot to the body, he was very, very swift to get out of the way of the counter that was coming. The, the reflex is very, very swift indeed. Again, being told to keep it up. That's a nice shot from Baracus. I think Barney Smith just done the right thing there and tied him up after it rather than trying to stay on the ropes and counter. And just falling short a little there. Final 10 seconds of round six. But again, it's a, a round that he has done enough to consider one. Good shot there from Brackus just to finish the round.
think both guys are probably feeling this a little bit. I'm just having a look at the corners as they're sitting down. Hasn't really, though, put any sustained pressure on Smith. No, he hasn't, but I think that we may see a change. Who knows? I think he, he needs to. He's, he's, he's well behind in the fight. He has, you know, we, we've both given him a round. But if you want to win this fight, I think there needs to be more output from Baracus. Yeah, unbeaten. Remember the Colombian. Beautiful counter shot. Just a step back and look at look at the length on that left hand. Beautiful shot. Second down, round seven. Round seven. And again, you talked about a, uh, the maturity of the performance in, in everything that he has done so far. He's timed everything well. There's been nothing gung-ho about this. It's almost as if he's been expecting it may go long. Yeah, look, uh, he's, he's probably a, a fighter who, who's more mature than his years. And, and the gym that he's in, it's full of quality fighters, oh. none other than, yeah. than, than AJ in yeah, the gym. Yeah, yeah. I mean. These kids can be learned a lot when you have a superstar like that in your gym. Yeah, well, that's what he said. He was talking about the, the environment. Of course, his housemate used to be uh, Josh Taylor as well. So, I mean, yeah. he, you know, he's had plenty to look up to. And what a fighter Josh Taylor was, yeah, yeah. is still. <laughs> hey. But he's got one more round after this to manage to take away the vacant WBO youth title. And Barakas, really at this stage of the, uh, of the fight, has got to realise that he needs to do something. He's trying, he's having a go here. And you got to be impressed by that. Both guys are actually trying to see him shot quite a lot, the, the counter backhand. Barney Smith is, is having more success with it throughout the fight, but it has landed a few times here for Baracus. And he's, ha he's having a good round here so far. But again, Smith going back to the, the craft of the technique that he has got in such abundance. And again, you can see as he's getting his head in, the referee stepping in to uh, separate. Dangerous position to, to be in. You see Barakas, he's just kind of rushing in a little bit. He's got he's got them kind of short hands, and like I said earlier on, it was an issue that I had short arms, sorry, it was an issue that I had in my career, but when he has Barney Smith on the ropes, the, the, the shots, he's, it's almost like he's thrown one or two good ones and then he rushes the rest of them. I think he could try and be a little bit more precise just when he has Barney, Barney Smith in that position. But he's having a go here. Yeah, realises that he's going to have to end this on his terms. Because playing for the final whistle, there's only going to be one outcome. Now that was arguably another round for Barakas. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, there was a fight earlier on the night that was a lot closer than I had it. So who knows what the judges are seeing here. But I, I've definitely been able to give Barakas two rounds in, a, in an eight round fight. We've, we've a round to go here. Um, yeah, so let's see what happens. I think Barakas is going to be really aggressive. and. It's important that Barney Smith just doesn't allow him to dictate things. Well, here is Baluta in the dressing room. Looks uh, looks relatively he's a comfortable in his uh, surrounds, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a character. He loves the fight. And a quality, quality fighter as well. With some big wins. This kid wasn't meant to do anything in his career, you know, but he's beaten some big names. And fair play to him. Here we go, then the eighth and the final round. We believe that Royston Barney Smith has 
leading here quite comfortably. And this means Barajas is going to come out and he's got to start firing. He's got to start firing big in the hope that something catches. But for Smith, he's just got to maintain the composure and the diligence that he has shown throughout the fight so far. He doesn't need to be drawn into a war. No, he doesn't. He needs to box from a distance, but... And when he did, gets onto the roof like he is now, he just needs to move off. Claim the centre of the ring again. He's got to be careful here because I've given Bracas two rounds so far. Yeah. If we give him this round, that's three rounds in an eight-round fight. Mm -hmm. uh, a judge may have given him, you know, a, a four rounds apiece. Who knows? But again, I do have Barney Smith in control and leading the fight. And that was a lovely lead uppercut. But he just needs to do more of that. Box from a distance and not allow Bracas to get too close. Well, and that's when he's having a success. I'm just looking at the corner again. They're, they're, they're telling him to move off the ropes, not stay in the, not just lab out there. Sometimes you can be comfortable on the ropes. You think you're comfortable on the ropes, but even if shots aren't landing clean, it may look like Barakas is being busy, and, and that may be enough to give, you know, for a judge to give him the round. Yeah, the, gangry, the blood just beginning to drizzle from that cut. And again, when he gets in a close quarters, he tries to unload work punches to Smith's body. But again, the defence is good enough to act as a barrier for those. But he's trying to rough him up a bit in this last round. He's got just over a, a minute to control things here. It was just a, just a little saying there. Was Barakas the one that was trying to get his hands free? And, yeah. and Barney Smith was the one that was keen to hang on. And that's where he doesn't need to be. That's stuff that he's doing on the ropes. Although defensively, he's, he's pretty sound when he boxes off the ropes. It just gives Barakas a chance. Back to try to keep him at the end of those long arms. And if he does, then punches like that from Barakas are going to fall short. He's having another OK round here, Baragas, which some judges may give him it. The fact that he's on the front foot, and yeah. the, the, the fact that he's the output's greater here in this round than, than, than Barney Smith's. Good body shot there and a good right hand as well over the top for Baragas. Well, to be fair, this looks like it is a Baragas round, and if you add the last one in there, that's two. Yeah. So it could have been given two or three, so maybe this might end up being a little bit closer. I mean, you would imagine that Smith has done it, but it was a good conclusion to the fight. Those last two rounds yeah. for Baracas, I think he's probably done enough to take. There's an argument. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I've given Baracas three rounds, but in an eight-round fight, that, that's not enough. Um, in, in my book, I, I've given Barney Smith five rounds of three, but yeah. we'll see. We'll see what the judges say. I, I still think that Barney Smith, you know, clearly done enough to win the fight. But this is a fight that'll improve Barney Smith. He was in against a good opponent, a strong opponent who was here to win. He had to deal with a cut as well. Probably the first time in his career that that's, that's happened. And again, there was there was really good signs of maturity throughout the fight, but just as the fight went on, I think he just stayed on the ropes for that little bit, yeah. that second too long, and that was my only concern. But for me, I have Barney Smith winning this fight. Is the uh, the stats? Well, the punches AI landed. Stats. <laughs> the punches landed. I mean, there's a, there's a big difference there, um, a big differential. But again, like we said, it doesn't always tell the full story of the fight, and I do have Barney Smith as the winner, but that was a good fight and a good learning fight for him. So just waiting for the scorecards to be passed up. The, the belt, this, remember, the vacant WBO Youth Championship, the Super Featherweight Championship. be more aware of that in the in the future when you look back at this fight watch how the the head collision happened 
And you, you learn from those things, yeah, don't look, you? Absolutely. I mean, in terms of his career, he, he, he's a kid. He, he's, he's still an improving fighter. There's still a long way to go, but he's, he, there is a bit of quality with Barney Smith. I think he's with a great team as well. And this is a fight for me that will certainly help him improve as a fighter. I think we are just about ready then for the official scorecards. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Nerman Androvich scores it 79 to 73, and both judges, Michael Alexander and Amar Sakrawi, score it the same 78 to 74. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated. And now the WBO Youth Super Featherweight Champion, Sugar Boy Roy, Rustin Barney Smith. No surprise at the end of the day, no complaints from Barakas either. And the man who wants to be a world champion before the age of 22. The journey begins now, and he's now just getting used to having a belt put around that midriff. And regardless of what belt it is, it's always a good feeling. Uh, absolutely. I mean, he'll be, he'll be proud of punch. Just when you, when you have your first belt, I mean, even as an amateur, when you get your first trophy, no matter what size it is, it's a, it's a proud feeling you get. And Barney Smith is, is well on the way to doing big things, I think, in this sport. Very good fighter with a very good team. And there's a lot of like about the kid. I think he's the full package. Well done to Royston Barney Smith. First bell there must be a special moment for him. Fabio, you trained in the same gym as him. Do you think he sort of came through that relatively unscathed? Yeah, look, Barney's a is a young kid, but he went through a lot, a lot of 